Today we're talking all about the psychology behind disorganization and what your messy life is secretly trying to tell you. Welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nina and I'm a life coach that specializes in personal development. Here at this channel, we talk about everything having to do with our emotional well being, understanding our own psychology, and living our best life possible. So if you aren't already a subscriber, please take a moment and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected. Today's video is very close to my heart because I spent most of my life being completely disorganized in a huge mountain of unnecessary clutter. So maybe you can relate to this where you just kind of have stuff all over the place and for some reason you either can't or will not fix it. Maybe you bought bins or different organizational systems, but no matter what you do, it's just completely overwhelming or you've somehow learned to kind of work around it to the point where you really don't even notice it anymore. Or maybe it's gotten to the point where other people are starting to notice, which was certainly the case for me. I think that people actually tried to somehow make me feel better about it by making jokes or playfully saying I was like a mad scientist. But deep down, it was something that I was never really happy with and certainly made me feel bad about myself. I mean, I looked at my home and my workspace and it was completely a mess. It was completely disorganized. What should have been my office was just filled with tons of boxes that were unlabeled and stacks of paper everywhere and just a bunch of stuff that I later realized was pretty much complete garbage. What we fail to realize a lot of times is that this outer chaos is often a huge sign of internal conflict. It is our body desperately trying to get a message to us, which again was certainly the case for me. Now, every once in a while, this can actually work the exact opposite way, but it's still the same message. Now, when that happens, it's when you are overly organized or you are constantly cleaning almost to a neurotic degree. And that is also because our life feels out of control and we are trying to gain that control by controlling one aspect of our life, which is that cleanliness and organization category. So you may have a spotless house and you may have everything on spreadsheets, but really the issue is the same. So either way, when we think of it as having to do with stuff, we never really get to the root of the problem. So the problem really isn't the actual messy house or messy office or messy car or whatever it is. It's what's leading us to feel out of control and therefore live in a way that's out of control. And we're losing control of the organization of our entire life. That's why a lot of times we may get the motivation to actually clean this stuff and straighten it all out and put it in boxes, but eventually it all kind of comes back because there's a deeper reason for this clutter. So today's video is not how to clean your house or how to get organized. Rather, it's trying to help us figure out what are the actual issues preventing us from being able to do so. We need to find out what's happening internally when we live in this kind of chaos, because if we fail to do so, it often causes us to feel a lot of sadness or guilt that we live this way. We can also feel hopeless or helpless, which can certainly lead to further problems down the road. I did want to say, however, that everyone goes through specific periods of their life where they may be, you know, overwhelmed at that moment or have a lot going on or have some kind of extenuating circumstance. So we're not talking about those little brief periods in your life. I'm also not talking about those specific people that choose to live in clutter. There are some people that actually like that environment and they actually thrive in that environment. They may be very artistic or feel that they have their own system that works for them, which is fine. I am simply talking about those of us who feel completely out of control and unable to fix what they perceive as a problem, which is this disorganization, this clutter, and this mess in their life. So let's take a moment to look at some of the possible causes and repercussions of having this very chaotic lifestyle. The first thing that we have to realize is clutter is often just a matter of delayed decisions and delayed 
actions. So we know there has to be a fate for all this stuff at some point. It can't stay this way forever. So we are just really delaying the discomfort or displeasure in doing so, or we are feeling like we are unable to take action for whatever reason. People that struggle with this aspect often see it play out in many different other areas of your life. So you may want to think about whether or not you tend to really delay decisions or actions in your own life and then figure out why that is the case. The second thing might be that we are surrounding ourselves with clutter as kind of a comfort nest. So a lot of people find it to be kind of a buffer from the rest of the world or a buffer from their problems. We can feel that it really shields us from a lot of pain in our life because we are just kind of surrounding ourselves with the things that make us happy and that make us feel safe. So it may be an overwhelming amount of things, but we are doing it to try to protect ourselves in some way. The third thing that we might be doing is trying to hold on to the past. So we may be surrounding ourselves with all these little artifacts or memories that we want to have around us because we feel if we are not always looking at them and having them kind of physically and emotionally available to us, that somehow these memories are going to fade and go away. So it's almost like we are thinking of our cluttered house as a bin to hold on to all these memories. We're very, very nostalgic. We may feel that, again, we'll forget about the past if we aren't looking at items from the past all the time, or we may fear that our future is not going to be as good as the past. So in a way, we are always trying to relive the past by being around all the things that remind us of it. The fourth thing that could be happening is we could have actually been taught by our parents or caregivers that we don't have control of our lives. So especially if you had parents that were, you know, very disorganized themselves and, you know, they felt very helpless about it, that could have been something that was taught to you as well. You could also have a subconscious belief that organization is not even possible because you always saw that reinforced within your own home. So this has obvious repercussions, but it also ties into other things because when we feel that we cannot gain control in one area of our life, that leads us to believe that it is impossible to be in control of any aspect of our life. The fifth thing that could be happening is that we are afraid of lack. So we are worried that we are going to go through a time when we're not going to have what we need. We won't be able to fill our needs. So we are trying to hold on to every possible thing to make sure that we never suffer that feeling of lack. So we might be afraid to waste. We may be feeling that we just have to hang on to every little thing that ever enters our life. And it could be because we have experienced lack or loss in our life before, or we may just have a fear that it will happen to us in the future. The sixth thing that could be happening is that we are trying to avoid thinking about a traumatic life event. So if we had something that happened to us that is very, very painful, in a way, if we keep our mind and our home completely cluttered, there's really no time to address those issues because there's always something right in the forefront that needs to be addressed. This is something that can also really become a pattern in our life because if we are trying to avoid thinking about situations or dealing with situations in our life, we tend to really stuff our life or clutter it with lots of things that really are less important but that we feel that we can handle. So psychologically, we're just kind of trying to fill our life with as much chaos and noise and obligations as possible. So we never actually have to address the real issues in our life that could feel very painful and uncomfortable to address. Another thing that could be happening is that we are actually trying to give ourselves some form of self-care or self-soothing. So we may feel that our needs are not being met in our life. We may be completely overwhelmed. We may feel that other people are kind of pushing us around and asking us to do a lot of things. So in a way, we are trying to take care of ourselves by telling ourselves we don't need to do the things that make us uncomfortable or that are unpleasant. So that could mean that we never address the things in our life that are actually important, but it also gives us kind of leeway so we don't need to really clean our house or organize because we are telling ourselves that we deserve the time we need to you know, relax and do what we want to do all the time. 
So we have to realize in this scenario that self-care is never going to be an activity that actually adds pain into our life later on. So if we are doing something that is actually problematic in our life, that is not any kind of effective self-care. Yes, it could be self-soothing at the moment, but in the long run, that's very destructive in our life. So self-care is never going to be something that actually makes us unhappy. So the last thing that it could be is that our life is completely out of balance. So I just did a podcast on this, so I will link that below just in case you missed out on creating balance in your life and realizing that your life is unbalanced. But oftentimes having all this mess and all this clutter is your brain and your body telling you that you are overwhelmed and your life is completely out of balance. You may have set up a life for yourself that is actually unsustainable, that you don't have enough time to do all the things that you need to do in your life. So you may be so focused on other areas that you're not actually giving yourself the time that you need to be organized, to clean up this mess or whatever it is in your life. But you need to look at your life and see if it actually has balance in it. Do you have time to actually accomplish everything that you need to accomplish in your life and be happy in the process? So maybe you're able to actually accomplish everything, but you're still not giving yourself enough time for the things that you need for you, which should also be on your list. So that's definitely something to think about as well. So those are the reasons that I most commonly see, but there could also be other reasons that are true for you. So whatever the case may be, you want to give yourself enough time to really analyze your life so you know what is actually going on. On. So if you don't choose to be messy or disorganized, something is happening because there's no way that you are not physically capable of cleaning. Every person is physically capable of cleaning. We just may not be mentally able to clean right now. So we need to know why that is. The fact of the matter is that for most people, outer order creates inner calm. And the reverse is true. When you are feeling that inner calm, you are able to have that outer order. So it comes down to really getting down to the root of the issue for you. Self-analysis is always the key to this and any other issue you have in your life. Really thinking about the why behind it. And you can successfully perform this self-therapy on yourself by sitting down and really journaling it out, really giving it enough thought and analysis and writing down all the things that you feel could be potentially at the bottom of this issue. And that may take, you know, a little bit of time. You may need to think about this for several days or several weeks. This could be something that you've really pushed away for a long time, especially if this is a habit of behavior that has been with you for quite some years. You wanna think about all your past issues and ask yourself if you've really had closure and healing from these issues, because if you haven't, it is going to start to leak out to many different aspects of your life, not just a messy house. So make sure you are not trying to put a band-aid over the problem by giving yourself more space or giving yourselves more bins or organizational tools. It has nothing to do with that. It always has to do with you. If you can heal yourself, you are going to be able to take control of your life and make it the life that you truly want to lead. And that was absolutely the case for me. I love having a clean house and a clean office now and just having a clean and uncluttered mind. And that came from doing that introspection and that self-analysis. So I definitely invite you to do the same and I wish you so much luck and happiness in the process. So I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, please like it and share it with someone else who may need to hear the same message today. Also, again, if you aren't already a subscriber, please take a moment and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected, and I thank you so much for spending time with me today. Have an absolutely amazing day.